Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the carburetor on your lawn tractor with a single cylinder Briggs and Stratton engine. So this is the engine I'm working on today. It's an overhead valve engine. Now even though the engine I'm working on today is a 13.5 horsepower, the same carburetor will fit on 15.5s and different models as well. And in case you're wondering, the carburetor is located right underneath the air breather box over here. If you do have a fuel cutoff valve, please turn it off or else when you take the fuel line off, it's going to leak fuel everywhere. Now I'm going to take off the air breather box cover. Now remove the air filter itself. Now inside here I'm going to remove the bolt here, it's a 5 16 I'm going to remove the bolt that holds the bracket for the choke cable. And I'm also going to remove the 5 16 bolt over here. And I'm just going to loosen this bolt here so that I can move this bracket out of the way. Just like this. Now what I need to do is remove the two nuts on each side. And you're going to need a 7 16 socket for that. Once you've got all the bolts off, just move this cover off. Now you're going to notice that there's a little tube attached to the cover. You can simply pinch it out and it's going to come off the cover. What this is is a breather vent tube that vents the crankcase of the engine. Now at this point I'm going to remove the fuel line clip and remove the fuel line from the carburetor. Just simply turn it, twist it and pull. If it's really hard to get off, you can just make a sliver in it. And then it'll be easier to pull off. Now at this point, I'm going to take off the choke cable. Just simply lift it up. Now I'm going to remove the connector from underneath the carburetor. And if this o-ring is stuck on the carb, just remove it and put it on the air breather box. This is where it goes in. Usually it doesn't come off like that. So I'll just put it back in and keep it there for when you put it back on. And now with an 8mm wrench or a deep socket, you can remove the two bolts at the back here. Now the carburetor may be stuck a bit on the manifold just from the gasket, so just simply grab it and force it a bit, it's going to come unstuck. So just take the little spring off like that and to remove the linkage you just simply move it like this. And now your carburetor is completely off. And here's the new carburetor you're going to need for this engine and it's part number 791886 and it's an OEM Briggs and Stratton carburetor. Now there's the carb in the box and there's other little parts as well. There's a little piece of fuel line like this if you need it. If you don't, then you don't need to use it. There will also be an intake gasket, two fuel line clips, and this little plastic cover for the adjustment screw, which is right here. So what I'm going to do is once it's on the tractor, is I'm going to run the tractor, adjust it till it runs at its best, and then put the little plastic cover back on so it cannot go out of adjustment. Now you may notice a few little things that are different on the new carburetor from the old one. Don't worry about it, it's still going to fit. The adjustment screw may be different, that's not a big deal. And the choke lever over here may be slightly different, so don't worry about it. You can just hook up your choke cable in this hole over here. And it comes with the solenoid at the bottom. What this solenoid is for is when you turn the tractor off, it cuts the power to this little solenoid and it prevents fuel from going up through the carburetor to the engine and apparently it does prevent backfires. Now the reason why there's a hose like this is because on the new carburetor it doesn't come with a plastic elbow like this. The fuel line just sticks out so you're going to need to install this line which has the elbow built into it and then connect it to the fuel filter or wherever your fuel line connects on your tractor. So at this point here I'm going to hook up the fuel line and I'm going to install a new fuel clip to hold it on the carb. Just simply run it through the line, just like that. And I'm going to grab the intake gasket. 
on the old carburetor there's a much bigger gasket but I'm not going to reuse this one I'll be using the new one today so what I'm going to do first is hook up the throttle linkage and the small spring to the lever over here so just grab the little spring and insert it in the little hole over here and now I'm just going to put the throttle linkage in the hole just simply shove it through the top like this now I'm going to line up the intake gasket over here and now I'm going to install the two bolts and make sure you line up the intake gasket on the other side as well when you put in the second bolt and make sure this hose is up like this out of the way now with your 8 millimeter wrench just simply tighten up both bolts and tighten them up evenly you may want to close the choke so it's not in the way now I'm going to hook up the connector at the bottom of the carb now I'm going to reinstall the plastic bracket first I'm going to reinsert the little breather tube over here what you have to do is squeeze the grommet part of it into the hole over here now before putting the bracket back in its place I'm just going to rehook the choke cable so you want to grab your cable and insert the z-bend part of it into the hole on the lever over here and that's good like that now you need to reinsert the bracket on the studs here at the back of the carb and now you'll need to install the two nuts that hold the plastic bracket on and then make sure to tighten up the two nuts now at the top here I'm going to reinstall this little bolt and it's a 5 16 now I'm going to bring up the bracket for the choke cable back up and right over here it's this little bolt that goes there and after that you can tighten up this one and now you want to reinstall this little bracket and the bolt that holds the choke cable in place and I'm gonna set the cable to approximately where I can see where it was before I'm going to put it on like this now at this point it's important that you have the choke cable set appropriately right here because if it's not the choke may not be on when you think it is and may not be off when you think it's off now one way to know if you have the cable adjusted properly is if you look inside here the air breather cover you should see inside the choke butterfly right here and as you can see it's open which means that the choke is off and you should have your cable pushed in all the way like that when it's open like that so that tells you that the choke is off when you pull the cable to put the choke on the butterfly should be shut just like you see here you can see that it's shut down there so the cable is set properly and now if I push the cable back in, the lever should be open. What I'm going to do now is remove the old fuel line that I cut here previously. And I'll just connect it to the new line I put on the carburetor previously. And now squeeze the clip back to the shutoff valve. And now you can put the air filter back on. Put this little knob back on too and now you can put the cover back on so now that the carburetor is fully reinstalled I'm gonna put some fresh gas in the tractor and try it out
it seems to run real good. I think I'm going to put that little plastic thing on the carburetor to keep the screw set where it is. Now that smoke there, I think the guy had dropped a bit of oil where the muffler is previously. That's why it's smoking. This tractor here hasn't run for over a year and a half, I believe. This is the little plastic piece I'm talking about. And once your tractor is running good, then just put it back on here in this position. And just push on it. If you find it a bit hard to push on, just grab a 7mm socket and use it to push it in. And now you want to check all the fuel lines for leaks. Make sure no fuel is leaking. And make sure the carburetor is nice and dry as well. You don't want anything loose and fuel to be leaking out of your new carburetor. So that's all there is to installing a carburetor on your lawn tractor with a Briggs and Stratton engine. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.